Hey guys, let's take a look at a quick uh, lesson about square roots. And this is the difference of two squares theorem. We've dealt with difference of two squares before. And uh, we're going to look at the look at the answers of those top three. Okay? We have the square root of 9. We know the answer to that, right? What? Just 3. Okay? 64. Square root of 64 is 8. Square root of 121 is 11. Okay. Generally, when you look at a, you know, the square root of 8, you're just going to choose the positive answer, 3. Okay? But... If you start out squaring something and you have to derive the square root by mani manipulating that equation, you're going to do this. If, if this is your equation again, m squared is equal to 3. Well, to find the answer to this you know, equation, you, you're going to have to take the square root of both sides. Because remember, in, a, in an equation in an algebra, if you do something to one side, you have to do the same thing to the other side. Okay? If you do, if you do excuse me, uh, the square root of m squared, the square root of 3. What you're going to have to do is, well, once you get the answer is m on that side, you will take this and have two answers, plus or minus the square root of 3. Because if you take the square root, a negative of the square root of 3, and you square it, which means you're going to multiply it by itself, a negative times a negative is a positive, and the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 9, which is just 3. Okay, So you have two answers when you have an equation that looks like this. So this is the kind of the theorem if you want to write it down. You don't have to. If p and q are real numbers and if p squared is q squared then p is equal to q and p is equal to negative q. Now the, in a nutshell this is what this means. When you have p squared is equal to 16 okay, you're trying to find what numbers if you squared them would give you 16. All right. And what you'll say is uh, again if over here if you just had the square root of 16 what's the answer? You'd go 4. The answer is 4. If you're introducing having to take the square root of both sides, then you're going to have to say that p is equal to plus or minus the square root of 16, which is 4. Because if you put this back into the equation for p, in other words, if here's p squared equals 16. If you put a negative 4 in there for p, then you will get a true equation. That'll work. So the in a nutshell, if you start off with a square root, the answer is a positive number. If you start off with a square that equals 16, uh, you're going to have two answers. Now, if you want to, here's another way to think about this. If you have p squared is equal to 16, what you could do is you could go over here. You're going to move this 16 over to the left side. becomes a negative 16, right? Okay, then it equals 0. Now, if you remember your uh, difference of two squares, how to factor this, how do you factor that right there? You would say there's two things, right? That equals zero. You'd have p right here and p right here, and then what would the two signs be? You plus four and then minus four, right? Okay. So you'd have this, p plus four is equal to zero, and you'd also have p minus four is equal to zero. So you would actually have two answers. p is equal to negative four and positive 4. But rather than go through all that rigmarole, you can just say the answer is plus or minus 4. Of course, you could write this as the same way you would write this right here. So let's take that and go to something like this. If p squared is equal to 41, what the heck is the square root of 41? There is no in integer answer, right? I mean, so you're just going to have to go, okay, well, I'm going to need to take the square root of both sides. The square root of p squared is p. The square root of 41, but you just leave it. There's nothing you can do with that. But you do need to put, the answer is plus or minus. The square root of 41. Oop, there goes my... Okay, all right. K squared equals 13. Piece of cake. In fact, when you come to these in your Algebra 1 uh, problem sets, these will take you like two seconds, okay? The answer is, taking the square root of both sides, K is equal to, and go ahead and put plus or minus, the square root of 13, done. All right, try your practice problem A and see what you get. Okay, you might not have known this. Um, might not be one of those you memorized, but the square root of 169 is an integer. It is, it's 13. So, but if you had the square root of 169, it would just be 13. But since you're doing it this way and you have uh, P squared equals 169, you have to put both answers, which is positive or negative 13. Okay, pause it and try B. Okay, no such thing as an integer answer to the square root of 23. So you're just going to have to write plus or minus the square root of 23. All right, try C. 
Okay, C, same thing. Square root of 14, and there is no such thing as an integer, so just positive, negative, square root of 14. There you go. We'll do more uh, variations of this uh, coming up soon. So, all right, see you guys next time.